Hello everyone, this is David, Fairly Secret Music. Um, gonna start a new series where I pick 10 albums that have kind of deep cuts and stuff that I don't see talked about quite as much. Um, might be bands that are very popular, uh, that these are the tracks that I don't hear people talking about much. Um, or tracks that I think should have been released as singles or, or whatnot. Um, so the first band is Shock Paris, and not a lot of people talk about Shock Paris. They had one album before this called Steel and Starlight, and uh, which I need to get on CD. Uh, Concrete Killers I had on, I think, both vinyl and cassette when they both came out. And the singer is quite an acquired taste. Uh, he has a lot of really uh, strong vibrato and can hit really high notes, but just very melodic vocally. Um, but, you know, it's, it's weird. It's like a baritone singer with a lot of vibrato who can hit like Queensryche type notes. And uh, the best song on this album is called uh, the Heat and the Fire, which if you don't like that song, this band is not for you because that song is amazing. And they did a video for that. So people might have seen that on MTV back in the day when, um, you know, when they still actually showed videos. I don't know. I don't remember ever seeing the video until I started looking things up on YouTube years back. But this album is fantastic, and um, they do have a new album out. Um, I just have only heard like little bits and pieces of that. So, uh, The Heat and the Fire, uh, A Way Too Long, and In the Dark are also really great tracks to check out. I wish I could play stuff for you, I just don't want to have things taken down. Uh, you're on YouTube, you can just type in Shock Paris, Heat and the Fire and give it a listen. Next band is a band that uh, everybody knows, Candlemass, and like Solitude, um, uh, what's the last song? Sorcerer's Pledge, um, Under the Oak. A lot of people think of that stuff when they're listening to Candlemass or the Messiah years, like Well of Souls or um, you know, any number of tracks, but I don't hear and I don't see the Blackstone Wielder uh, actually played live very much. And um, that song is probably top five Candlemass songs, maybe even the top two or three. Probably, I don't know, maybe it's number one for me. I don't know. Um, it's been a while since I listened to the discography. So uh, that song, definitely the bridge, makes it so much more exciting. Uh, just the way he sings it, uh, the melodies, the the just the phrasing. It's just so fantastic. I'm trying to do these as like faster videos too. Uh, Black Sabbath. On the Headless Cross, there is a song called uh, When Death Calls. And again, this song, uh, the bridge, is the key point when he sings uh, the section where he says, or your tongue will blister. That's the section that I'm really focusing on because that is where the song just just comes to life. It's fantastic. And I, I hear people talking about the Dio era and the Ozzy era so much. Uh, Tony Martin's era really doesn't get discussed much. I mean, he was on uh, Seventh Star, Eternal Idol, um, Headless Cross, Forbidden Cross Purposes, and Tear. Tear is the only one that I don't have yet. Um, because it was so expensive. I, I just recently picked up Cross Purposes for $7. And uh, I already had some of the other ones. I hear that Tony Iommi is remixing Forbidden. This is one that I have listened to maybe once. 
But let's get back to Headless Cross, which I found for $3.99 used at a, at a place. Um, I was so excited. Um, but when death calls, yeah, the bridge section or middle eight or whatever you want to call it is really fantastic. Um, Anacrusis, uh, I see not a lot of people talking about them. This album's called Reason. And uh, the opening track is called Stop Me. And that pretty much sums up what this band is kind of about. That is, like, if somebody said, what is the one song by Anacrusis you would suggest, it would probably be Stop Me. Just because, uh, I don't know, just the way he sings it, uh, the the kind of screeches that he does and the mellow parts um just amazing yeah this is a band that i don't think gets enough recognition uh the nice thing is i have two three different versions of this i have like what i think is a russian bootleg i have this one that metal blade put out and then uh probably within the last 10 years they re-recorded their first two albums, this is their second album, and they uh, put that out as a double CD on Dive Bomb. I think it was Dive Bomb, I'm not sure. Ken Nardi has a new album coming out uh, in January. Uh, it's called, uh, I can't remember what it's called. Um, I've pre-ordered it. It sounds very rep reminiscent of later era uh anacrusis and it's the closest thing we're gonna get um but they also did a live show in 2019 i think that was in december of 2019 and they put that out on a dvd and two disc set i'm not sure if that's still available but yeah so check out stop me off of reason um I'm not sure how many people talk about Cyclone Temple. They're just kind of like a weird, obscure um, thrash band that came from Snow White. Basically, that was the whole band, except for uh, they had a female singer in Snow White. And then they started Cyclone Temple. And uh, I think his name is Brian, who sang on this. Uh, just... Oh, just amazing. Uh, his voice is so fantastic. This is called I Hate, Therefore I Am. I have two different versions. This is the Dive, Dive Bomb reissue, which has, um, which is sold out, but it has quite a bit of uh, liner notes, all the lyrics, um, Words from the fans, words from the band, uh, interviews, album reviews. Uh, yeah, this is... I probably just broke my CD. Um, this is just fantastic. This is a great video, isn't it? Um, and this actually has no bonus tracks on it. Uh, they put out a thing called Land of Greed and Money or something crazy like that that had their demos before they did this album. Uh, so what's the track on here? God, there's so many good tracks on here. But um, why, um, why is Fantastic, which is the opening track. Uh, Sister, Words Are Just Words, Public Enemy. Public Enemy has one of the coolest double bass parts in it. Um, God, I hate for... This whole album is nothing but deep cuts. So if you have not checked out St uh, Cyclone Temple, check out this one. Only album with that singer on it, though, unfortunately. A lot of people will talk about Power Mad. I don't see them shown quite a bit. Uh... Is that the right? I don't see them showing a lot on uh, on videos that much. 
Uh, they're uh, actually a Minnesota band, uh, probably my favorite Minnesota band. And we have bands like Soul Asylum Replacements, uh, Bob Dylan, whoever else, you know. Um, but Power Mad has always been my favorite actual Minnesota band. And um, the follow-up to this came about, what, 20 years later? Something like that? I'm not even sure. Let's see. This came out in 1989 and then actually this came out in 2015 and they sound very different um this sounds like you know your kind of standard run-of-the-mill i don't know european kind of thrashy whatever uh, I don't know. uh this had amazing vocals on it uh just uh, just everything uh, drumming Guitar playing, bass playing, everything on it. It's just fantastic. Uh, but the key track on here for me is a song called Brainstorms. Um, just the rhythms, the vocals on that. They do like this. Just, I love all those starts and stops, but not in a mashuga way. I fucking hate that shit. Um, well... And I don't hate it, but they're, you know, Meshuggah are known for that whole start-stop kind of thing, and uh, I think they're kind of overrated. But uh, Power Mad Absolute Power, uh, if you have been looking for this, and I know a lot of people were looking for this over the years, Music on CD has reissued it. And the way Music on CD does it is they don't remaster it at all. They don't even change the artwork at all. It is basically a carbon copy of uh, of what um, company was this? Reprise Records put out in 1989. So the new version will look exactly like this original CD, sound exactly like this original CD. So... If you're one of those people who has to have the original pressings, fucking get over it. Just buy the music on CD1 because it's going to sound, look, and be exactly the same as this. Moonspell. Uh, a lot of people uh, talk about irreligious, uh, wolf heart. Honestly, Sin is... In my eyes, the best Moonspell album out there. I just, I love it from start to finish. There's, there's a few things on it that, you know, were kind of filler, but there's a song on here called Handmade God, uh, the second song. This just brings me right back to 96. And uh, let me make sure. Nope, 97. Brings me right back to 97. 96 and 97 through 98 probably were the peak period for me and European metal. Like all, you know, Anathema, My Drying Bride, Arcturus, uh, Syra, Just a lot of amazing stuff. Um, this is the only album that really sounds like this in their discography. There's not any uh, kind of death or kind of harsh vocals. Everything is very melodic. Uh, some just amazing bass playing on here. Um, but Handmade God and probably Decadence were key songs. Uh, Realm, Suicidey. They are a Wisconsin-based band who uh, some of the members went on to join uh, Butto from Last Crack in a band called White Fear Chain. Uh, awful band name, but um, they had some really great stuff. They sounded more like a, kind of a... They had hints of Alice in Chains kind of in them, but Realm, uh, their singer, sings really high a lot. Um and there's a song on here called Cain Rose Up, Scream Bloody Murder, that is fantastic. People are walking upstairs in my house. Um, just awesome. I remember liking this album a lot and not liking 
the um, the previous album, which is called Endless War. I had a second copy of Endless War that I found for like four bucks, and I think I ended up selling it for like 15 or 20. But I listened to this like two times or three times when I purchased that extra copy, and I realized how good this album is. This is more straightforward. This is more messed up kind of, you know, watchtowery, um, perfect symmetry era, fate's warning ish kind of stuff. Um, with a lot of odd time changes. Cool thing is, and I don't really like covers much. They do a cover of King Crimson's, uh, one more red nightmare as a bonus track on this. This is one of those metal mind ones where it has the, uh, the, limited edition number stamp on there but yeah um just the way the song so they have an intro song called rise and then it goes right into cane rose up and those songs both together just are just fantastic um this is going to be in uh death and doom metals uh kind of wheelhouse I think his name is Liam uh, Saturnus. This is a fantastic album. If you like My Dying Bride or Paradise Lost or, you know, some more of the more straightforward growly doom, uh, Saturnus is fantastic. This guy also does a lot of spoken word stuff, which is cool. Um, every song on this album starts and is connected by birds chirping like in nature or whatever <laughs> um that's a picture of a deer frozen dead and this album is called paradise belongs to you uh the opening track is the title track and um that is fantastic but the key track on here for me is uh christ goodbye i love both of those technically but um yeah so very doomy, um, very much in that My Drying Bride vein, but its own kind of thing. And I guess they have a new album that they are, uh, they just got done mixing and mastering and Fleming Rasmussen uh, from Metallica fame. Uh, that producer has done the new um, Saturnus also. I want to say he produced this let's see it's like a weird booklet that doesn't give me information easily um let's see nope this one was produced by somebody else but he he has produced other albums by them but this this is by far their best album and i love this band photo so look at all those guys uh, what did they get the neighbor kid to come and play? Well, they got this guy who looks like he should be on a wrestling team. And then they got the neighbor and he's the drummer. And then, uh, this kid is the keyboardist and the guy in the middle was their guitarist who actually left after the second album or they had an EP in there too. But, uh, he started a band called Of the Moon and Wand, which is kind of apocalyptic folk kind of ambient or like new agey, whatever. Um, this guy right here is the singer. And then this guy was the bass player. And I think he was in the band up until their like fifth album. Uh, but his name, I think, is Brian something. Uh it's just ridiculous. Uh, we, yeah, uh, Brian Hansen. We thought that uh, that little that kid who plays keyboards. We we figured either wrestling guy or this kid right here was Brian Hansen, uh, but it ends up being this guy on the end who played bass. All right, enough of Saturnus. Um, Last band is a band everybody should know already. Voivod, The Outer Limits. I think 
the one, you know, you hear about uh, ripping headaches and, um, you know, Dimension Hatro stuff, uh, Nothing Face, even Angel Rat, you hear, I hear a lot of stuff. I don't really hear anybody talk about Outer Limits that much. I have three copies of this damn CD. I found that one for $4 and I'm just like, shit, I'm going to get it. I think my friend Rich needed it at the time. I'm not sure if he even needs it anymore because I think he bought those Japanese uh, releases. I really, really hope at some point they go back and do remasters with bonus tracks or whatever of Nothing Face, Angel Rat, and Outer Limits. And then I hope they go and redo uh, the two Eric Forrest uh, albums, because there is a third Eric Forrest album that they never finished, that I think they had at least recorded full, complete demos of, and it was another Voivod storyline. Um, but the key track on here is Jack Luminous. It's like 17 minutes. Yeah, 17 minutes and 26 seconds of pure perfection it's just so great the lyrics the the rhythms uh, all the melodies and and the key to this song and i know there are a lot of blacky uh bass fans um if you don't know who blacky is his name was jean or jean i can't remember what his actual name was um but that was his nickname was Blackie. They had Piggy, Blackie, Snake, and Away. Uh, but there was a guy named Pierre who played bass on this album. And his bass playing and the tone of his bass is so fantastic. It's like they took all the distortion off of the bass that um, the previous bass player had. And they, I mean, they have a, such a clean amazing bass sound on this album that's why it stands out to me so much um but besides jack luminous the lost machine is always so great uh we are not alone fix my heart there there are just so many great songs on here the only reason this album is not 100 percent is because nile song is on there i'm not a big fan of cover songs and i've never really liked that song by pink floyd either um i thought it was kind of what do you call it typical that they did another pig and floyd song i wish they would have done man erg by voivod if they were going to do a covers uh song but jack luminous amazing and within the last like six years or so they have played all 17 minutes of jack luminous live i would love to be at a show where they played that but there you have it those are 10 albums with uh, 10 deep cuts. Um, hopefully I've, you know, turned you on to something that you haven't listened to before or haven't paid attention to before or didn't think of getting into. Uh, just let me know what you think. Uh, I'm sure there'll be thoughts and comments on things. Uh, Till the next time. I will uh, find 10 more to uh, bring to you. And uh, you have a good day. I should say uh, 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 a little bit less. Have a good one.